All right, you're still watching. Oh, I love this day. World Smile Day. <laughs> It's observed every first Friday of October to focus on smiles and acts of kindness, leasing out good chairs and good works. The iconic smiley face we all know and love was created by Harvey Ball, a commercial artist from Worcester, and has today become the most recognizable symbol of goodwill and happiness worldwide. Now, the first World Smile Day was celebrated in Worcester, um, in 1999, and since then, it has continued to inspire positive actions and smiles around the world. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Ah. But you know what? Let me tell you. Let me tell you my story. So, I don't know what happened throughout my young age. Teenage, no, not teenage actually. I don't even know when I started smiling. But every picture that I had was like this. <laughs> so one day, I can't remember what year it was. I just decided, you know what? Let me even try and smile in the picture. Ever since then, I did not stop smiling. Because, <laughs> like literally, right? I just realized that ah, I'm nice. I'm this, the picture was nice. I was smiling. <laughs> because my mom said, you're always squeezing your face. You're always squeezing your face. So I'll just go like I was like, I keep a straight face. I take the picture. <laughs> as soon as I took one particular picture, I can't remember what year it was. And I had a smile on. I looked really nice. I, I said, no. I there were so, so, many, so, many, so many compliments that came with that and picture. Smiling makes you look more beautiful <laughs> and, um, you know, receptive. So yeah, much. so, because really, eh, if I keep a straight face, right, I'm not angry, oh, but Your if I just think face yeah, is yeah, an angry yeah, face. My rest, yeah. my darling. When you have to remind yourself, like, look, relax. Yeah. My resting smile, face, smile. like, literally, my resting <laughs> face is a, don't come don't near come me. Don't come near me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly me. So people say to me, oh, sometimes we want to come talk to you, but we're not but, sure. Yes. I'm always like, so let me just break it down for you. It doesn't matter what you see. As soon as you call me, you're going to get... Hi. <laughs> exactly. That's what people don't understand. So I, I try to convince people all the time, but the truth is, I know that my resting face is scary. So that's why the phrase, I, I, is, I didn't need to think about it. My mm. face is ah, my eyes ah, like <laughs> don't come near me. So I intentionally try not to keep my resting face because even sometimes when I'm like, you know, people just feel like, ah, wow, she's angry or she, I'm not angry. I just don't. When I leave my resting face, you you mm. can't you say you don't come near me face <laughs> by <of>. default. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good day to celebrate smile. Yeah. I've seen some people really they have very beautiful smiles. Ah, yeah. oh, good. Especially when you have dimples to go. My darling. And good dentition. Hey, there's that. That's the main name. What is our mission going to be accomplished? Oh my God! Don't remind me. Right? It's like, I, I want to give vineyards actually. Eh, mm -hmm. So I, I've been talking about it for so long. That's why it's calling my name. But ah. like every time I, I, I go and watch it, I, YouTube is just the devil. Because <laughs> when you then see the process, you're like, I'm not sure I want to go through all of this. Like, yeah. I, I can't somebody just, just, just blast the teeth? Just bang my head and the teeth are just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? But when I, every, since I saw the process, but I know that at some point, yeah, I probably will get veneers. But it's just such a scary process. Yeah, mm. it is a scary process, right? Oh when I say, manage my colored teeth like that, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that my, my teeth is actually quite sensitive. Ah. So, uh, once a few years ago, she woke up one day and said she wanted to wipe the teeth mm. as the laser kind. Oh. So, I went to the dentist and I sat in the chair. And I'm not afraid of needles, I'm not afraid of, but I know my teeth are sensitive. Mm -hmm. So, the um, the dentist then said to me, oh, yeah, so, you know, they put the thing in your mouth and they're going to position the light and they put everything. And I was fine. And I was lying down there maybe for about the first five to seven minutes. Then it was as if they just took live wire <coughs> and put in my teeth. No my teeth way. started shocking me. Like, I held on because I think they, they did it in bursts of, if I remember correctly, 15 minutes. They take a break. They do another 15 minutes. I made it through the first 15 minutes. By the second 15 minutes, halfway through, I said, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, it, um, I almost felt like afterwards, my teeth now, because they couldn't complete the process, now stained even more. Ooh. And I tell you, it was agony. For the next four to six weeks, 
my teeth were shocking me randomly. Like, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> Wow, yeah, some people were laughing at me at work, like, Chibi, you wanted to. You wanted my teeth. So, it was, so never again. So, right, like, when I think about my teeth now, I know that I have serious, like, so I use sensitivity. a particular brand of mm. toothpaste that is for sensitive yeah. teeth. If, mm. I, if I don't use it, like, I run out and I say for two days, let me just use regular toothpaste, once I drink cold water, mm. ah, I know that feeling. Mm. So, I have this to. Well. <laughs> so, what did we find in the news? Who's going to go first? Oti, go first. All right. I was hoping that you wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so that I would have to. But my story is um, my story is a very short one. Oh, I'm looking on the wrong place for my story. Um, hold on a you, is yours open? Yes, I take yours is. Okay, so my story is a seemingly sad one. I, don't know, I mean, there's, there was this lady that died in Abuja, I think last week or earlier this week. Mm. So, um, in an interview with the father, Reverend Joseph Olorun Femi, the father of the late greatness Olorun Femi, a victim of one chance robbers in Abuja, said his daughter planned to travel to the United States of America to commence her PhD in microbiology before her death. Um, Olorun Femi was reportedly stabbed and thrown out of a moving vehicle on the 26th of September 2023 along Maitama Kubwa Highway. Uh, it was alleged in a viral video that the medical team at the Maitama District Hospital, Abuja, requested a police report and denied her treatment. So first of all, I think I have an issue with the way the entire death went about. I mean, I know that we have, we have a very lackadaisical attitude in Nigeria, especially in the medical field. And I'm not sure why. I mean, I get the procedures, yeah, when you bring in um, gunshot and gun stabbed, shot, no yeah. accident victims mm. into the hospital. You, they'll need police report. But is there not supposed to be a case of maybe first aid? Mm. Because even if the person is a criminal, I believe that they would like to have the criminal alive, mm -hmm. yeah, instead of dead. So whether or not the person is a criminal, I, I, I think that there should be a provision for first aid, at least to keep the person alive, alive mm -hmm. while they do all the running around for police report. But when someone who was stabbed, losing so much blood, and then you just leave the person there and we are waiting for police reports. So did you really take the oath during your medical school that you would protect lives and save lives if you are seeing a life die? And now in this case, the father had already said she had plans to go to the United States for her PhD. This is how so many um, youth lives in Nigeria has been cut short and even their dreams have been cut short because of all this laxity on professional side and it's it's really really appalling and sad when i saw that I story know. i actually felt very pained first of all i don't understand when did uh, one chance enter abuja hmm. do you understand the things that because you know you know you know, the, you know the thing, yeah right. because the thing with one chance used to be very very it's a lagos thing yeah. you know so when did one chance enter abuja like i mean the the level of the level of insecurity, the way it's getting very heightened, is really frightening. Mm -hmm. You know, these days, you know, I'm so afraid to go into a cab. You know, I, I, do, I don't even want to go into a cab. Especially at night. You know, it's, I'd rather just be, if there's no car, to, I will stay, yeah. I will not go anywhere. Because there are just so many things. Because even outside of even buses now, yeah. you hear cases of cab drivers. The other day, I took a, a, a picture, I mean, sorry, a, a story of a, a go-kart, um, sorry, a... a, a What's it called? Dispatch logistics rider mm. that went into an SUV to steal the black. So this one, he, by day, he's both a an armed robber and a what's it called? A dispatch <laughs> rider. So it's think, crazy. I think that um, sad to say that none of this is surprising because yeah. with the rea our reality being what it is right now, the times are tough. Um, doesn't make it right, but that's what always happens. Mm. When this happens anywhere in the world, the rate of crime, crime goes up. Goes so yeah. we are just seeing the dividends of our current realities. If people can't eat, they turn to crime. If Absolutely. people can't survive, they turn to crime. So, and a lot of the crimes that we see, they're opportunistic, right? So you see somebody at a vulnerable moment and you can quickly grab their phone. Yeah. Um, on Wednesday, I went to the mainland. So when I was driving back to the island, just around that Bagada, just as you're coming towards to get on Third Mainland from Uru, I saw three boys just fighting. So if, if you know that area of Bagada, mm -hmm. you know there's a football pitch, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. on the other side, there's some space. And these three boys were literally fighting on that edge of where the, the bridge splits to mm -hmm. go to, to um, mm -hmm. Third Mainland or to go towards uh, 
towards uh, uh, Magodo, Magodo and yeah. the rest. Yes, and they were fighting. And you know, it took a second because it seemed like an odd place for mm, them to be, be standing fighting, and yeah. fighting. And then I, my eyes focused and I realized what was happening. They had obviously robbed somebody. Mm. So they had the bag. It was a le le nice leather red ladies bag. And they were fighting over the contents mm. inside. Oh my God. So one boy was holding the bag and the other two were beating the hell out of each other. Mm. And it was the contents of the bag. And these are the things that, you know, you realize that petty theft, armed robbery, all of these things, I think I saw a, a meme or a video uh, on Instagram the other day, and the guy was saying how um, there's a particular setting so that on your phone, um, so they can't get into your phone or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I was shocked by the comments. People were like, uh, what has setting got to do with it? Phone that they would have pieces for parts. Before. Is it even is it? No, when they robbed us in mm. Lagos, they actually told me to sign out of my iCloud. Mm. Uh -uh. And my husband to sign out of his iCloud. Uh -uh. So, so the thing is, because I think those guys, they had stolen a lot of iPhones enough to know that uh -uh, if you don't sign out of iCloud, yeah, so they will tell you yeah. there and there, sign out of iCloud. They will now do factory reset. So what is the issue of about so do you know what I mean? So it doesn't cost for all of, even just for me seeing the comments to say, even the you average Joe mm -hmm. knows, you know, it's just sad. It's I sad mean, though. Funny, a friend of mine went to Kenya with her family um, and she left her phone inside, uh, I think it was an Uber, or one of those ride um, companies. And the phone was, they held the phone ransom more. So they even thought, because of course, find my, my, my device. Yeah. They knew where it was. The police said, ah, this is gang territory, man. We can't even go in there. Mm. And then they called the phone. And person picked up and said, ah, they paid $200 to collect. Mm -hmm. Yes, now. <laughs> oh, to collect the phone back. <laughs> so let's not think that this is a Nigerian you know, When I left a brand new phone, mm. uninsured, on, on what is not even, it does not, mm. it doesn't, it's passworded. A brand new iPhone I just bought when I went to the US. Mm. I forgot it where I sat down. So when the security man came, when he finally saw me, he said, oh, I ran after you, you're gone, you're gone. What? I said, hey, brand new iPhone. Yeah, it, happen. it, it, can happen. it can happen but anywhere, it right? When all these crimes are mm, increasing, I mean, the people that are supposed to be maybe safeguarding us or protecting us, why are they not doing That's even the job? sad part. Let me even tell you how yes, bad it is now. Problem. So my sister was telling me that, you know that before, you know the hotel dollar, all that area, mm. it used to be, the infrastructure like, cleared it up and all of it. If you know what's happening now, so my sister was telling me now that now when she's going to work, coming back, you know, it is like speed it part because it was a constant thing. And the, the sad part about some of these robberies is that there are constant spots where people yeah. are constantly being robbed. Okay. Yeah. So if you truly want to fight it, fight the whatever, you can Bad stop it. You can stop yeah. it. So, mm. It's sad. But I, it's, it's opportunity. I think that even if you you put people there, they will just move somewhere else. Mm. But I get what you mean in terms of the crime. But just to speak to the part of your story around the medical side of it, I mean, this is a problem that we see repeatedly where police report. And you are very right. Hippocratic cruelty. I mean, you have to treat people. Yeah. But I think that to flip that on its side as well, if you speak to medical professionals, you hear all sorts of horror stories, what they've been through with the police. Well, they said that, but they said that the police had reversed that law. Well, so, here so who do we believe? Because, because we will still go to the hospitals today. They will still ask, ask for, for police, police reports. reports. Police so will come out and say, no, they have stopped police reports. So, so, exactly. we <laughs> so here's what I, what's what I was going to say. that Even if, I think that in, in having that information, case by case basis now, there has to be repercussions. Because if you don't do that, to be fair, that law was around for a long time. And some people, if you've been burnt before, you know, in your mind, you're like, no matter what happens, I'm going to behave in a certain way. But if you think about how you can change things, that change management, how do we make sure? There has to be, it's, stick, it's, it's, it's the carrot and stick approach, right? So in this kind of situation where somebody has lost their life, if it was clear that you didn't treat this person because of police report and that is no longer the law, then those people should face the consequences. Absolutely. Yeah. It is well. Anyway. What's your story? Um, my story is simple. My own is uh, to debunk the myth. NMPC comes out to say that uh, petrol prices are not going to go up. Of course, I don't know if you guys have noticed there have been queues in certain yes, places. Yes, there's about to be On, off, in. on, off. Yeah. Um, um, and really that's because um, people have been speculating because in truth, and I don't know if you've seen other stories that are sort of talking about subsidy and, and that, but the landing cost of petrol today is significantly so higher. Yeah. than what we are paying right now. So any right-thinking person, a logical person who says there's no subsidy, you, would be, you won't be out of place to think that, yes, no an increase in price is coming. Um, I think people that own tank farms, you know, if you even pay attention, 
if you if you notice a lot of independent petrol stations, you will see that they started closing down. So the big ones are still open. There's a particular fuel yeah. station that I was so sure that I always get fuel around yeah. my house. Since since this was it the second increment or mm. something, they've not sold one drop. Yes. So they, they now it's now almost like a lost business. Mm. So that they're, they're not. So the the idea is, I drove past the petrol station on Sunday. I hadn't been to church physically for a while, and I drove and I drove past and I was like, if somebody didn't tell you that there used to be a petrol station there, like mm -hmm. they had cleared it, they had smashed even the platforms where the That's pumps like had been standing on, right? And it was just gone, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So the fact is that business. Let's just take it that. Because uh, NMPC are the ones, the only ones importing right now. Mm. And if you are landing at a certain price and selling less than that, then something yeah, is bad. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> you see this NMPC matter and this FOE matter. I will talk about it when we talk about taxation. Let me take my story. <laughs> it says, um, <laughs> uh, legal luminary, uh, um, Are Afe Babalola, SAN, on Thursday, taxed President Bola Metunimbu to ensure that local government areas in the country receive their allocations directly from the federal um, Federation account to re revive agriculture and boost the economy. Um, Babalola said this while declaring open the eighth edition of the Afe Babalola Agricultural Expo, an annual gathering of farmers where they would be empowered by the, um, that's the, his foundation. He says that the local council have remained ineffective over the years in bringing development to the people due to the activities of the governors who allegedly hijack allocation. I think this local government autonomy has been a, a what's it called, a conversation that's been going round oh. in circles. But the truth is, if we really want to transform our country, we must, we must really empower the local government um, to be able to, you know, handle things. But then again, some people will come and they will argue with you that, ah, if you know the kind of allocation that goes with them, even that little one that comes to them, what are they even using it for? You know, yeah. what, 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 what are the, what are the like, things that they can point to say that this is what they're doing? I know one particular local government, I think Fuad uh, Atandawo, the one that is in Nobalendi, I see his work. I think maybe because he's done, he does a lot of social media to, to take people along. You know, why is Uti looking at me? Uh, okay, I'll take a break. <laughs> I shall take a break. Uti is not letting me. My eyes, my eyes were moving voluntarily. Really? I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be right back.